the only morality they recognize is what will further their cause. Meaning they By 1980, Ronald Reagan's crusade against communism had spanned five decades. The crusade for freedom is your chance and mine to fight communism. In 1947, he was the B-movie actor who railed against communist infiltration of Hollywood. Twenty years later, as the governor of California, he defended America's war in Vietnam. But ending the conflict is not so simple as just uh, calling it off and coming home. Because the price for that kind of peace could be a thousand years of darkness for generations yet unborn. In 1981, communism's old foe assumed a powerful new position. Just like in the movies, America's new president was ready for the final showdown. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. The Cold War balance of power had shifted dramatically in favor of the Soviet Union during the 1970s. Reagan vowed to change that. He made no secret of his desire to destroy communism. The West won't contain communism. It'll transcend communism. It won't bother to denounce it. It will dismiss it as some bizarre chapter in human history whose last pages are even now being written. While critics cautioned against inciting the Russian bear, the Reagan administration made plans to win the Cold War. National Security Directive 75 outlined a strategy to reinvigorate the nation's military defense and encourage political change within the Soviet sphere. Only then, from a position of strength, not weakness, would the U.S. engage in diplomacy. President Reagan's defense proposal was bold and controversial. It called for an investment of $1.5 trillion over five years, the greatest military buildup ever in peacetime. New ships, tanks, fighter jets, and nuclear weapons for the American arsenal and nuclear-tipped Pershing II missiles to strengthen America's NATO allies in Europe. We must stand by all our democratic allies, and we must not break faith with those who are risking their lives on every continent from Afghanistan to Nicaragua to defy Soviet-supported aggression and secure rights which have been ours from birth. In a policy known as the Reagan Doctrine, the president asserted America's right to support those who opposed communism wherever they might be. Breaking with the doctrine of containment, which had ruled U.S.-Soviet relations for decades, the Reagan Doctrine was designed to roll back communism. American military aid flowed to the Contra rebels in Nicaragua and other anti-communist resistance groups. The president authorized billions of dollars in arms for Mujahideen guerrillas battling Soviet troops in Afghanistan. With the help of American-made Stinger missiles, the ragtag militia turned the tide against the mighty Soviet army. While these far-flung conflicts became bleeding wounds for the Soviet Union, American aid bankrolled the human rights movement behind the Iron Curtain. It is the democratic countries that are prosperous and responsive to the needs of their people. Before the British Parliament, President Reagan made a bold prediction. What I'm describing now is a plan and a hope for the long term. The march of freedom and democracy which will leave Marxism-Leninism on the ash heap of history as it has left other tyrannies which stifle the freedom and muzzle the self-expression of the people. By the end of his first term in office, defense spending reached $34 million per hour. President said he was arming to disarm. 
an increasingly vocal minority, said he was mad. The nuclear freeze movement argued that the president was leading the world toward nuclear war. One million freeze supporters converged on Central Park in 1982 to denounce the arms buildup. We want no more nuclear weapons! Reagan maintained that they had misjudged his intentions. He wanted to end communism, not the world. And he had a plan to do it. Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. In March 1983, President Reagan proposed the creation of a space-based missile defense known as the Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI. The concept read like science fiction satellites patrolling the heavens, zapping incoming Soviet missiles with lasers. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies? The press quickly dubbed the controversial plan Star Wars. Soviet leader Yuri Andropov denounced the American president for inventing new plans on how to unleash a nuclear war. Star Wars was decades from becoming a reality, but the Soviets saw it as an immediate threat. The Soviet Union was stretched to the breaking point. Fully half of its economic output was needed to keep pace with Reagan's arms buildup. They had neither the money nor the technological know-how to join the race for a space-based missile shield.